This is the first authentic story of how the syndicate controls and operates every racket and vice in the nation. Based on the bullet-riddled pages of the bestseller by former assistant New York District Attorney Burton Turkus and Sid Fader. The bombshell that exploded it all. The hoods. The sleazy babes. The wanton gunmen who accounted for the incredible total of approximately 1,000 killings. Executed by Murder Incorporated. Starring Stuart Whitman, My Brit. Here are the most notorious killers for hire in the annals of crime. Names that left a blot on our history. Lepke. What you have in Bronzeville, I have a hundred times over in the garment district. Albert Anastasia has on the docks in Brooklyn and the Capone boys have in Chicago. And the trigger man without a conscience, Abe Rellis, known as Kid Twist. You take what you could get your hands on Take! Don't ask questions! Take! What you want, take! What I want, I take! Witness after witness was rubbed out by the syndicate. Only one man dared challenge them. Sure, I'll be taking a chance. But who else ever had a chance to get a kingpin like Lepke on the stand for first-degree murder? I gotta do it. Sure, I'm taking a chance. But with what I got on him, I can nail him. For what you did to Edie, I'm gonna put you in a chair. I'm gonna turn the juice on and I'm gonna watch you fry it easy, kid. Now look, you're losing your head. You gotta take your time. Keep your head. No, I'm gonna watch you fry it. The rise of the labor movement in the United States is a bloody story of violent strikes, lockouts, and pitched battles between fledgling unions and entrenched employers dead set against them. Gangsters force their way in to provide muscle and protection for each side, which then accuse the other of initiating violence. Once hired, the gangsters proved to be very hard to fire. The big new scam was called labor racketeering. It was the signature of the 1930s, as surely as prohibition had been of the 1920s. Labor racketeering meant exacting a payment or tribute in cash from unions or employers under the threat of violence. Now all you have to do is pay tribute to the gang. And if you don't, all the gangsters have to do is wreck your business. A simple, reasonable arrangement, unless you become too objectionable. In that case, a representative from Consolidated Rackets Incorporated pays a routine business call. By 1925, the crowded slums of New York City were slowly giving way to reforms. So were the factories and sweatshops. Labor unions were gaining strength, and class warfare was turning bloody. Nowhere was this more true than in the garment industry. You had in New York at this time, war between the management and the unions, both sides being Jewish. And each side began to use these hoodlums in the wars. As a consequence, they'd hire themselves out to, uh, to each side. And that's where he began to get the idea, look, if you could control management and labor, you've got it made. Lepke and Gara could see the opportunity in this new line of work. So they joined a gang run by a powerful five-foot-two Jewish mobster named Little Augie Organ, who specialized in labor violence. Little Augie recognized that Lepke's calculating business sense and Gara's hulking brawn would be profitable additions to his gang. 
They were just two of Oregon's 150-man organization, which was rented out to violently shake up labor disputes. Little Augie wasn't particular about who he worked for, labor or management. He just had a price list. Thank you.